Hello everyone, Andrew Glazer here from the Glazer Tutoring Company and today I would like to teach you how to use the factor theorem to find zeros of a certain polynomial function. All right. Now uh, what we have here is we have a supposed factor of this polynomial function. And what we have to do is we have to use the factor theorem, okay, to see if we can find all of the zeros of this function. So what the factor theorem basically states is as follows. The polynomial x minus k, which by the way is a linear function, right, a linear polynomial, is a factor of some larger polynomial, which is this in the problem, if and only if the function's value evaluated at the value of k is equal to zero. Now, if your mind went numb, don't worry, so did mine. Basically, what we have to do is we have to look at this factor, and we have to find k. Now, in order to find the value of k, you have to set it up in this form. In other words, you need x minus k. The problem here is that the signs don't match up, right? So the x matches up, but the sign doesn't. So what that means is that you need to take this and change the sign. But if you take that and change the sign, you also have to change the sign then of the 2. It has to become a negative 2. The reason being is because a negative times a negative is a positive, and this now is identical to this given factor. So what we now, though, have is we have this in the right form. We have x minus then our k. So this is indeed the value of k. Now what the second part of this factor theorem states is it states now that if you plug in this value of k into your original function, which is this in the problem, and when you evaluate it, it's zero, then you know that this thing is a factor. So remember that this kind of idea that if you plug in f of k is equal to zero, that's also kind of known as the remainder theorem, right? Um, you know, this is, you can find the remainder uh, by plugging in f of k. And whatever this is will be the remainder. And if you have a remainder of zero, well, that means that this is a factor. Okay, that's basically what we're saying. So let's do this. So we're gonna take the original function, two x, cubed. Now, everywhere you see x, just simply plug in a negative 2, okay, because that's the value of k. Plus then negative 2 squared minus then 5 times negative 2 plus then 2. So just plug, I mean, you could plug that into your calculator if you like, or you could do the math out in your head. Anytime you raise a value to an odd power, the sign will stay. So that's going to be 2 times some negative value, and then 2 times 2 times 2 is going to be 8, okay, so that's negative 8. Then this is any time you raise a value to an even power, the sign will always become positive. So that's going to be a positive now 4. Then negative times a negative is a positive, so that's going to be a positive 10 plus 2. So when you evaluate this, that's negative 16 plus 4 plus 10 plus 2. And if you add all this up, guess what, ladies and gentlemen, it equals 0. Ah, so what that means now is since I evaluated the function at the value of k and it equals 0, and it equals zero. That means this thing, x minus k, or this thing here, okay, is going to be a factor. All right. Now, if I know the factor, okay, so keep this in mind now. If I know the factor, let me just erase this. If I know the factor, you can always find the zero then by setting it equal, okay? So to zero, but what, what did I finish that thought? I don't really know. I don't, I can't even remember the past three seconds what I just did. Don't ask me what I had for dinner last night, because I have no clue. Actually, I do remember. It was quite good. It was actually salmon with, uh, what was it? Oh, maybe I don't remember. No, no, spinach. Sorry, salmon with spinach. Yeah. Entertaining. So take your factor here, set that bad boy equal to zero, and solve it for x. And this is then the zero. Negative two is a zero of this function. In other words, the k value that you found is really a zero, okay? These are all kind of connected. So I'm just going to write this or just leave it on up here at the top. That's one of the zeros, okay? Now it, it turns out we can do, now we can basically, oh, what happened? 
there we go. Now what we can do is we can basically um, use this now, knowing that this is a factor. I can divide this factor into this polynomial function and see if I can further then factor it out so I can find some zeros. Take a look. So what I'm going to do here is I have a nice little synthetic division table. And essentially what I'm doing is I'm taking this function and I'm going to divide it now by this factor x plus 2. All right. So we use synthetic division to help us out. So remember, um, whatever the highest power of x is in your numerator, just add 1 to it. And that'll tell you then the number of columns you need. So I need four columns here. And then the coefficient of your x cubed term goes into the first column here. This is the x squared. That's the x and the constant, right? So they, and if you need more help with synthetic division, I got like 50 videos out there. Check out the uh, channel, all right, under the playlist for pre-calculus um, under polynomial functions. So the, sorry, coefficient of the x cubed term is going to be a 2. Coefficient of the x squared term is a 1. Coefficient of the x term is a negative 5. And coefficient of the constant is a 2. Cool. Now, to find the value that goes on the outside here, all you're simply going to do is you're going to take your denominator. Now, this has to be a linear function, by the way. It has to be like some coefficient plus a number or no coefficient plus a number, something like this. And what you're going to do is you're going to set that equal to 0. Solve it for x. Oh, wait a minute. That's, isn't that the same thing we did before? Sure. And this is basically like finding the value of k, and you're going to plug that in there. Then what you're going to do is you're going to follow a division algorithm, which is just a fancy way of fo saying following a series of steps. So you're going to drop down the 2 now, the first number, always. That's why there's a red box here. And you're going to take this value down here and multiply it by the value over there, and you're going to enter the value then into the next adjacent cell. Then you're going to add this column on up. So it's going to be a negative 3. Then you're going to take this value, multiply it by that value. That's going to be a positive 6. Plug it into that column, add it on up. So that's a 1. Then you take this, still multiply it by that outside value, incorporate that value into the next adjacent cell, and add that on up. And oh, look, it's 0. Remember, in your synthetic division, this is the remainder. Okay, that is the remainder. And that's what we showed before, all right, that the remainder was 0 when we plugged in the f of k. Or I should say when we plugged in k for x in the original function over here. Now keep in mind what these values at the bottom represent. This value all the way on the right represents the remainder. This will represent your constant term. This will represent then your x term. And then this will represent your x squared term. So what I'm saying is that when you take this, okay, in other words, you take this function and you divide it by this, you will get this as a result. In other words, you will get 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. Okay? Here, let me set it up for you. And here it is. Right? When we took this function, divided it by this, we got this as then the result. Okay? Now what I can do, all right, and remember this is already one of the factors. We already found that. We proved it before. And if you were to cross multiply this, right, because you can cross multiply it, you can basically bring it across that equal sign. If you notice then... I almost have this in almost fully factored form. Here's one of the factors, but then I realize I'm like, oh shoot, this is definitely not in factored form, right? So what we can do now is we can try and, well, you can do a couple of things. You can think about this and you can figure out, you know, if you know two numbers that multiply to C, but add to B, right? But you can't really do that exactly because it's not gonna be as straightforward because you have a coefficient here in front of the X squared. So you, it turns out that you can do this a couple of ways now. Uh, you can use the quadratic formula, right, which is x is going to be equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. What happened to the c? There it is. All over 2a. Right, this always works for every single quadratic, whether it's real or imaginary. So it's a very powerful formula to know. So you can find, w with this formula, you can find the zeros of this. Okay? That's cool. What you can also do, and by the way, what is your a, b, and c value here? Remember, this is of the form a x squared plus b x plus c, right? So your a is going to be a 2, so write that down on the side. a is 2, b is going to be a negative 3, so b is equal to negative 3. And then your c value is a 1, okay? Now, if you plugged in these a, b's, and c's into here and you did all that math, which you can do, right? but that's just basic algebra, you would find then the values of your 
of your uh, zeros, of the remaining zeros. But you could also use your calculator, right? So here, I have a program in the calculator. So you hit program, all right? And I'm going to execute my quad program. If you want to know how to program your calculator, all right, with this wonderful program, check out the link in the description below. I made a video on it, all right? Take you about like three minutes, four minutes to get through it. And uh, it'll save you a lot of time in the future. So make the investment. So all you have to do now is plug in your A value. So A is 2, hit enter. B is going to be negative 3, hit enter. C is 1, hit enter. And oh my goodness, there it is, right? There are the zeros, okay? Or aka the roots. So what this means now is that the X values here, all right, will be equal to 1 and 0 0.5. You got two X values. So these are now two zeros, and we found a zero before, right? So we have three zeros overall. And this is what, I mean, that's what it's asking, right? To find the zeros. Those are the three answers. And remember now, once you know the zeros, you can always go back and find the factors, all right? So like if I had to factor this now, all you would write is you would write your two binomials, Leave this x plus 2. And then just take these values, and if this is positive, make it negative. And if this is positive, make it negative. All right? if these were negative, you'd make it positive. Basically, I'm saying to just flip the sign. And these are now the three factors. Okay? These would be then the three factors. Three factors give you three zeros. Now, what you can also do to show it to yourself is you can graph this thing. So let's clear this all out. All right? You can graph it. So... Why don't you graph 2x cubed, so let's do 2x cubed, all right, uh, plus x squared, plus x squared. That's x2, not x squared, x squared, there you go. Uh, then minus 5x, minus 5x, and then plus 2. And what I want you to do is hit graph. And if you notice now here, right, maybe I'll zoom, maybe I can zoom in a little bit. Let's do zoom to, let's zoom in, zoom, there it goes. And here we go. Each one of these tick marks represents one. So if you notice, if I go to the left now, two places, that's a negative two. <gasps> Look over here. That's one of the roots. If you then move to the right, one tick mark, that's a positive one. Doesn't it look like it crosses there? <gasps> and there it is. And this then looks like it crosses halfway in between. And there's the 0.5. Now, from the graph, it's almost, it's very difficult to tell, right? Because how do you know it's negative 2 and not negative 1.9999876543321? Well, you can always use your table if you like. So you can go to second table. And I have this incremented by one unit. So we're going to miss the half. Uh, but if you notice, when x is 0, y was going to be, uh, excuse me, when we're looking for the y values. When y is 0, x was negative 2. And that's what we said over here. And when y was 0, x was also equal to 1. And that's what we said over here. Now, uh, to find the halves, you'd have to uh, wind up manipulating your delta table. So it says pre press plus for the change in table. So press plus. All right. And instead of incrementing the table x values by 1, you want to increment it by 0.5. And then you can hit enter again. And oh, look, it increments it by 0.5. So if you notice, we also have a 0, right? when y is equal to 0 at 0.5 for x. And that's also what I have here. So there's many ways to like look at this stuff. You know, you don't need to use the factor theorem. Quite honestly, it's a really long way to do this problem, and I would hate to do it this way normally. Uh, but that's what's required uh, for this particular question. Hopefully this makes sense. And for some reason, I am getting out of breath, just speaking. So um, you know what? I'm going to do a little cardio. All right? I'm going to do a little workout. So guys, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. Remember to not only take care of yourself mentally, but also physically as well. I look forward to helping you with more problems. And if this helped at all, please like and subscribe. It helps us out tremendously. And even tell some of your classmates. If we're able to help you, we might be able to help them. And we want to help more people. Right? We really appreciate your support. Take care, guys. Check out our channel. Bye.